Good morning, folks. We had another special video last night. We've got the first sunspot magnetic analysis of this next phase in solar activity. It's the Earth, Sun, and Space News on deck as we begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star. Coronal holes reaching up from the south. Bright spot bottom left, that sunspot group. The solar wind had its minor intensification due to the patchy central coronal holes. Left side, scale shows the telemetry is up but still in moderate range, so the effects on the geomagnetic system are minor. We're still in the green. Taking a quick look at that active region, needing to do the magnetic analysis for this one, which you can learn more about with the Sun Series playlist found on our channel homepage, we do see multiple umbral cores here, and with that we can gauge its flaring potential magnetically. Here we do see beta class magnetism, positive blue, negative red, but they are split to opposite sides of the region. The more interaction they have, the more flaring they have, and so this shows you why the region hasn't released any flares just yet. Once again, with the sun gearing back up for its maximum phase the next few years, it is time to reacquaint with space weather science. The sun series playlist on our channel page breaks down everything the sun throws at us. We'll go to an earthquake up next showed up in the weirdest of places in the Pacific. USGS ended up revising it way down to 2.6 and shoved it north to Alaska. But the original reading was of concern. Blot echo depth shake there. Perhaps it was an error to be corrected, but perhaps not. Folks, I don't have it in me to do another bushfire cover or the people dying from cold in India, so here's a tumbleweed storm. These rolling travelers are no stranger to those living in the western states, but there's no doubt this is extreme. Kind of ridiculous, actually. The December 31st drought look is out, posting where the water is needed most, and usually somewhere in the country has exceptional drought, but that's not the case right now. Lots more detail when you click into it. And we are off to space. And folks, while most meteor showers are leftovers from great comets that entered the inner system from the outer reach, some come from those smaller ones still traipsing around the inner system. One such example is the quadranted meteor shower, it is set to peak here tomorrow. Should be able to get some viewing tonight as well. We are staying close by up next as we get two free-to-read, uber-geek-level solar physics papers from Frontiers. One on plasma filaments, their magnetism, and kink instability plasma physics. The other focusing on a flux rope contained within an active region and its behavior during an X-class solar flare. Those blue and red spots we saw in the sunspot magnetic analysis are the anchor points for these fields and flux rope currents. So when they interact, it's a magnetic explosion of plasma we call a solar flare. Let's get a bit deeper into space up next and find a couple astrophysicists from Ukraine that slept through the last two years of discoveries. It is always an excellent choice to focus on a Taurus jet, but in this work, they describe how they believe it may be the self-gravity of the Taurus that confines it and controls its dynamics. Well, the problem is that the entire subfield of Taurus jet science has conclusively proven that this is a 100% electromagnetic structure. From the electric current twisting magnetic fields of the jet to the toroidal fields an induced donut around the central plane, the current produces fields and the system tries to hold the material in an equatorial disk anyway. This is what happens. Last but not least, folks, a fantastic video was posted by two of the fathers of solar climate forcing in Europe. Svensmark, in particular, is the king of cosmic ray cloud modulation. I cited him many times in my book, and of course, their video is a deeper dive into some of the particle specifics that we heard at a slightly more macro level last night. You see, the water cycle of evaporation, clouds, and rain just isn't quite as simple as we'd like to believe. The cosmic ray cloud forcing, the solar particle and electric heating, the direct effect on the total atmospheric column through the global electric circuit and geomagnetic field. If you didn't catch last night's video, the sun, plasma climate forcing, it is our first in the next special examinations, the future of climate science, and it's linked for you below. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. Of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.